have been just a minute. Yeah, wait, wait. My camera is not good. Hi, Javin. Hi, Paresh. How is it going? Hi. Welcome to Odisha Design Week. So this is Paresh, uh, Paresh Chaudhary. So actually, you are very familiar, like all designers in India, the entire design community, they know about you. And uh, whoever uh, present here, uh, yeah, luckily, Suresh is uh, just, uh, yeah, uh, enter. So let okay. me get into, then uh, he will take the responsibility. Just a minute, yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. I can wait. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Javin. So let's go ahead. So uh, Javin is a, a product designer and he's based in Mexico and he's uh, traveling a lot. He worked in India. He worked in uh, currently he's uh, working in uh, Spain. I would request Javin uh, if he can uh, introduce himself, then he can start his presentation. Uh, Javin, over to you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Paresh. For first of all, I'm glad to be here. Just as Paresh said before, I'm very familiar with the design community in India that uh, I admire so much. Though, so here are uh, still here. I am here presenting. So I feel so honored to to be here because I love uh, I love I love your country and uh, and I I was so fortunate to live uh, in Pune two years ago. So. Let's get started. Let me share my screen in order to see my presentation, the presentation that I prepare, especially for this day. Just give me one minute. So please let me know if you are uh, watching my presentation. Is it everything okay? Just let me know if you're uh, watching my slides because I can watch it. Okay, I, I, I will assume that everyone is watching my presentation right now. Okay, perfect. Okay, nice. Well, uh, although I'm Mexican, uh, I am currently I am currently uh, living in Bilbao, um, in the Basque Country, in the north of Spain. I live in here since two months ago. Uh, but well, I'm so honored. I feel so honored to be here. Glad to be here to present uh, to to pre uh, to talk about. Um, some issues that I really, really care. Um, I am industrial designer. I have a master in strategic communication. Uh, I am design business consultant because I really like how uh, link the, the design and the business issues uh, since always. Uh, I've been design and in medical equipment design for more than like maybe 12 or more than 13 years. Um, I'm designed for all enthusiastic, and right now I am circular product design consultant. So uh, let's get started. Um, let's talk about uh, green design. To talk about circular economy in product design, we must start to talking about something that everyone calls green design. But what is green design? From a design award point of view, green design is a product or service that has been designed such that it has minimal negative impact on the global or local environment, community, society, or economy, right? But uh, let's talk about eco-friendly green design buzzwords. Um, many of these words are 
express how design is uh, linked with the sustainability with the ecology. So let's get started with some uh, so about some what does the, these uh, terms means. For example, eco design. Eco design uh, basically is a, a lot of good and well intentioned ideas without a really impact, right? But there is something important that I have that you have to remember. There is no eco design without social design. Another term uh, that we used a lot is eco friendly, right? Eco friendly literally means air friendly are not harmful to the environment. Eco friendly products also prevent contribution to air, water, and as we know, land pollution. You can engage in eco-friendly habits or practices by being more conscious of how you use resources. Uh, I am uh, reading uh, these uh, this, uh, descriptions, right? Okay, what is sustainable design? Sustainable design basically is uh, uh, the basic objects of sustainability are to reduce consumption or non renewable resources, minimize waste, and create healthy, productive environments, right? If you want uh, to know more about these concepts uh, below on the slide, you can visit the, the sites where I uh, got this information. Okay, all these approaches uh, have something in common, right? And that is that they are focused in this media narrative about we need to save our mother earth, which is true. Of course, we need to save our mother earth, but it is not enough. Again, we have, uh, we, we have, we need to save our mother earth, A-S-A-A-P. So, uh, it's, and it's very common to see in the store this kind of product, right? But these products are sending the wrong message. We won't save our mother earth buying these products. So be careful because these products uh, are doing something uh, called greenwashing. I don't know if you uh, uh, know about this term, but greenwashing, it's not right. Uh, these products are doing something like, like, like I said before called greenwashing, telling us that all the time that buying, that by buying this product, uh, made apparently with natural materials, we are going to save the uh, the planet. But again, it's not enough. So we do want to save the planet. But here I am going to read a text from a good uh, uh, friend, industrial design uh, designer, a uh, friend from Netherlands. Uh, he's a specialist in circular economy for designers. And uh, I'm going to read this text from him. In my more than 20 years as a practicing industrial designer, I have learned that many potentially promising ideas for a sustainable design end up unused or are not even considered in the first place. If they are not, and you have to remember this, if they are not accompanied and supported by a business rationale for, adopt, for adopting such an idea. So uh, it's important to take into consideration that if we want to design products close to this sustainable design approach, we have to think about the business, the business issues about the sustainability. Because it's not only about the materials, but the lack of a system that should to integrate an economic factor. This is very, very important. And to understand the system, we have to talk about how the circular economy works. And I'm going to explain you very quickly. So, first of all, we take materials from Earth, right? We transform them into products, we use them, and, we, and after that, we throw them away. And basically, we do that, we do that all the time. We extract, we extract uh, materials, we transform materials into products. After that, uh, we use these products and then we throw away these products. And this is basically how circular, uh, a traditional circular linear economy uh, looks, right? Again, we extract materials, all well, it starts here. We transform these materials in products. We use these products and these products uh, 
most of the time ends in a landfill, right? But why apparently all these products stop being useful for people? And why all these products end in a landfill? We have to make ourselves as designers these questions. Well, one reason or one uh, concept that maybe explain why all these products end in a landfill is the planet obsolescence. I'm so sure, and as, 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 as I know, I'm so sure that you are uh, aware about this, uh, this concept. And the second one, and the second one, the second reason that uh, why all these products end in a landfill, it's because the people get bored about uh, use these products, right? So we extract, we manufacture, we consume, and we waste. And basically, uh, we all uh, do that all the time. But how can we prevent products from ending in a, in a landfill? And how, uh, as designers, uh, how we can uh, prevent this? Well, there is three uh, concepts that uh, I want to share today with you uh, in order to preserve the, preserve the integrity of the product. And these concepts are long use, extended use, and recovery, right? These three concepts are framed um, into uh, this circular economy uh, concept. This slide is uh, explained, I want to express uh, the difference between linear economy, the traditional linear economy that I shared with you uh, a few slides ago, the reduced economy, you know, every day we uh, hear about uh, recycle, reduce, all the things that we use, but again, that, it, that it's not enough. And the second one is the circular economy, right? So we ex extract uh, materials from the, from the earth, like we transform them, then we use, and after that, we can reintegrate this product some, some way again to the, to, the, to the cycle. Okay, so to finish this, uh, this part of the presentation, in the linear economy, raw natural resources are taken, transformed into products and get disposed of, but, on the opposite, a circular economy model aims to close the gap between the production and the natural ecosystem cycles on which humans ultimately depend on. It's important to remember this. So, uh, right now, this is the name of the presentation, right? This is, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, why we call this presentation uh, uh, this is why we uh, we are doing this presentation today because I'm so um, I'm so concerned to share with product designers the relevance of our disciplines in order to rethink the process, rethink the products. But we need a methodology. We need a process to approach to these uh, to these new uh, concepts. So, what design methodology can help industrial designers to design products? that are tailored to match business model types of creating, delivering, and capturing value from long and extended product lifetime. And this is all about. So uh, I want to share with you another uh, concept designed for preserving integrity. Uh, these are, um, this, is a, this is a concept uh, created uh, for, by um, Marcel Holland, that is uh, industrial design friend from Holland. Uh, uh, Marcel, share with us that uh, there, is, there, is, uh, there are three categories or three groups of, um, of, um, of approaches to preserve the integrity of the products. The first one is long use, the second one is extend use, and the third one is recovery, right? In the first one, we are uh, working to resist an obsolescence. The second one, postpone, postponing obsolescence, and this, in the third one, res reversing obsolescence. And and I have uh, some ex uh, some uh, examples to explain in a better way this uh, concept. If you want to design for long use, you have to design for emotional durability, just like a pen, uh, like a Mont Blanc pen. You <laughs> you don't want to throw away this this expensive pen, right? So you have to design for uh, build 
uh, an attachment or design an attachment to this product. Another example is, for example, design for physical durability, right? The bicycles are designed to uh, uh, are designed, uh, you know, to use these products for a long, long time. The second one, extended use. Well, we have three examples: design for maintenance, design for uh, products that uh, needs uh, uh, needs the, the less maintenance possible in order to preserve the good uh, appearance of the product. Design for repair. I don't know if you are if you are aware about the fair phone, but this phone is designed to repair the opposite to the iPhone, for example. Design for upgrading. All of our cars are designing for uh, for upgrading for for uh, for repair. contextualizing because I think that, that the UGAD is the best example for this kind of, uh, of concept. And uh, in a few slides ahead, I explain why. Okay, so how the products we design and manufacture end in a place like this? We have, as designers, we have to ask ourselves these questions. How the products we design and, math and, and manufacture and in a place like this. Well, I have to tell you something. If a product ends in the landfill, it, it's because uh, wasn't designed properly in the first place. Are you thinking about that? Food for thought, uh, another, uh, another uh, strong statement. Objects don't just die, right? They survive. Did you know that in the last 50 years, the humankind has produced more artifacts than all than in all of uh, previous history? And the last one, this is Kevin Shabazzi, Circular Economic Lead and Board of Innovation, um, Britannic uh, Design Consulting uh, based in London. Uh, this guy shared with us that the product designer already decides the 80% of the circular impact. So as you, as many you know, right now, uh, we have a lot of responsibility as product designers when, when we are talking about circular economy and when we are talking about uh, avoid to these products ends end in a landfill, right? All these products of the picture, of the picture uh, were designed uh, by a industrial designer or an engineer. But they don't, uh, or they didn't, sorry, they didn't uh, think about what happened with the product after we uh, we finish uh, use. Okay, well, let me uh, share with you uh, a story. I used to live in Pune a few years ago. I was um, associate professor in the Maharashtra Institute of Technology in the School of Design. I'm here uh, among of these uh, incredible and amazing people. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, amazing examples of product design students from MIT. So let me share with you the process behind uh, design a circular product. First of all, we start uh, by asking people about the product they use on a daily basis, right? So we have to start uh, how they perceive the products, how they perceive, uh, how they use the products uh, and all the features that the, the products are, are integrated itself. After that, we take pictures. And after that, we tear down the products. We separate the components of the product and we took pictures. Uh, they actually are really good pictures. So you can be aware about all the components that a product like a mouse, it's a, it's a simple product, all the components that are integrated in this small product and, and in this small object. 
this uh, activity is so useful to understand how transform a product, a traditional product, into a circular product, right? It's so important to start in, to start analyze, analyzing, sorry, the all the components, and after that, rethink the product, trying to eliminate all the comp all the components that maybe are not necessary. We made the same uh, example with an. Uh, Nyron, we took this picture. And, and, and this, uh, this team actually, uh, actually they uh, got a, an award, an Indian award, the Lexus Design Award. They, uh, they were final, finalists. But they designed something with less components and something very interesting, Inspire, inspired by uh, an old iron. Looks familiar? Well, so finally, I want to share with you uh, some, um, some thoughts, some questions, uh, like uh, as, uh, as a product designers, we have to, to, uh, to ask ourselves. Uh, maybe, perhaps, the solution has been right under our noses all this time. So you hear about you got? I'm sure that you that you did. I think that you got. Uh, it's the best. Uh, it's one of the best ways to express how the circular product design works. So these are uh, the last thoughts that I want to share with you. Uh, how to design something to survive beyond the tradition life cycle of the products, the traditional life cycle of the products. We need to design for post-use, not just for pre-use. We have to design the post-use. We have to prevent the scenarios after uh, we uh, finish the use of the products. And the last one is creating world without creating waste. And this is this is possible, believe me. What's new? Well, I have to share this last example. You can own these shoes. Want to know why? Well, just visit the link that I, I am uh, displayed right now, and you will figure it out why you can own these shoes. But you can use it. OK, well. Thanks for being here. I hope that uh, this uh, talk was your, for your interest. Uh, I was so glad to be here sharing this circular product design thoughts with you guys. Thank you very much. Hi, Jabin. Thank you very much for that presentation. Hi, Suresh. Hi, hi. Uh, can I request you to stop sharing your screen so we can take a few questions? Yeah, yeah, of course. All right. <clears throat> In a world where the share prices of companies are based on new products and selling more of the same thing, Apple, for instance, which is hailed as a pioneer of good design, but their share price does depend on a new phone, a new product, a new iPad, a new iMac every single year. Is there a conflict between the way designers think or designers work and the way industry is structured yeah of course of course there is a conflict uh actually actually a few days ago i was reading about that uh because uh i was reading an article where they they compare the the fair phone a phone that you can re design for repair and the iphone a phone that you can't repair uh, the conclusion of this article is it's, it's because the business models of these companies are different, right? The business model of the Fairphone is uh, that you can, you know, you can repair uh, your Fairphone by buying a small pieces, right? That you can replace. But the business model of the Apple is that you have to go to the store, to Apple store, 
and to pay for this repair. So it's not about just the product. You have to think about the system of the product and the business model of the product. But what can a designer do if, you're, if Apple hires you to design the cloths for $19? What can a designer do but say, okay, I'll design a phone for you? Or a, a wow, for wow. This is, this, is, this is a big question. This is a big question. Actually, 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 I have a, a, a Mexican design friend that, that is working with Apple. And uh, this guy shared with us that uh, inside the Apple, they work in, this is all confidential, or, of course, but, this, but they, they are working to be more sustainable in a few years, to rethink the way that they are selling and designing products so we have to wait about what will what will happen with apple well yes it's it's, it's a very a very good question maybe the maybe the answer is that inside of the monster maybe you can start a revolution and it's not just apple i'm just using apple as an example you can take nike you can take tesla you can take yeah, exactly, any large exactly. technology company or any large company for that matter okay my second question is this when technology changes, and technology changes very, very fast, design has to change. When CRT monitors were introduced, they were the big thing in technology. And when LED screens came in, we had to throw away our CRT monitors. So how can we repair a CRT monitor? And an LED technology is a completely new technology. So we have to throw away the CRT monitors and upgrade to LED or LCD. How, can, uh, how does that align with your philosophy of repair or reuse or don't allow things to go into landfill? Well, Suresh, surprisingly, uh, you, be, you, you will be surprised maybe if you, uh, if I share with you that in, in many places in Mexico, uh, these, these all computers are being repaired for people to reduce or to recontextualizing the use of these, uh, of these computers for, uh, um, uh, to share these, these new products to new communities to new users. Maybe this is not the brand new computer that we all want to buy, but for other people are so, so useful, right? So creating a sort of marketplace for used products that can be sold and recontextualized. Absolutely, for market is one absolutely, way of absolutely, absolutely. What is the fair phone that you keep talking about? We have, we don't have it in India. So could you send us a link to it or tell us how? Yeah, yeah, of it? course, of course. How do you spell it, F-A-I-R? Yeah, Fairphone is a company based, I guess, in South Africa. Uh, this 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 Fairphone is designed for repair, so you can you can see uh, you can uh, separate the components in order to replace. For example, if the camera is not working, you can buy just the camera and replace the camera. For example, right? So yes, it's a it's a very it's a very good example about the the, the new. Uh, the, the, thing, the, the products yes L let me share with you in the, in the oh, chat i'd like to get yes. one for myself yes of course <laughs> thank you we'll we'll find time find one my next question to you jabin is regarding design education yeah it's not just companies that are guilty of greenwashing a lot of design educators are, are guilty of greenwashing as well do this, this is eco-friendly make a bamboo toothbrush it's better than a plastic toothbrush uh, wood is more uh, sustainable, plastic is not. A lot of this is actually not true. If you have to make yeah. medical equipment, plastic is more sustainable than making wooden medical equipment, perhaps. How does design education need to change to prevent this uh, this wave of greenwashing? Well, uh, actually, I, um, I was so fortunate because when I used to work uh, at MIT, uh, I was able to change the the all the philosophy about uh, about green design, and I have to tell you that uh, I believe I, I truly believe that we made a change on in these uh, product design students uh, because uh, it's because uh, all the all the media many years ago uh, used this media narrative that we have to change we have to save our mother earth. Just buying products like, like looks like natural, right? But right now, this mentality is changing, right? So, I truly, truly, truly believe that we can we can change 
this mindset from the product design schools. Uh, I, I'm truly believe that about that. The circular, the circular product design actually it's a good approach uh, to uh, to change the mindset of the students because it's it's easy to understand the concept, right? Circular instead of linear, right? And in the opposite. Uh, many many people think that the sustainability is something that you add to the product in the last part, in the last phase, right? But right now this is changing. You have to integrate the sustainability from the beginning, right? And and uh, and it's a actually it's it's a good idea to integrate it at the beginning because the sustainability bring to bring to the table new new brand new ideas to design brand new products. Right, so sustainability is is another creative way to design things, right? So you have to be you have to see sustainability like a like a barrier, like a limit. Okay, it's it's the opposite of that. It's a it's 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 a new way to uh, to think about new products, new ways to produce, new ways to use. Uh, anyway, have you been to? Uh... India, Jamin. Sorry, have you been to India? Yeah, yeah. I used to live. I've been in India three times, and just to live in India uh, two years ago in Pune. I lived uh, for almost one year and a half, so I, I miss a lot India. Do you see a lot of similarities between your home country of Mexico and India in the way we recycle, Absolutely. the way we use products, our cultural yeah, yeah. connections to products and, and materials? Yeah, yeah, yes. There is a lot of similarities, and there is. But uh, first of all, I, there is a lot of work to do ahead. Because, for example, I uh, right now I'm living in, in Spain, in, in Bilbao. So in Europe, as many you know, there is a lot of initiatives. Uh, you, uh, you have to separate your waste because outside you can uh, see different kinds of trash cans where you put these uh, different uh, kinds of waste into it. Uh, Unfortunately, in India and Mexico, we don't have that yet. So there is a lot of work to do. And yes, we have a lot of similarities. All right. So we hope to see you back in India next year for the next edition. Yeah, yeah. Edition yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Drinking All chai. Right. And I, I miss a lot of the food. <laughs> it's amazing. It's an amazing country. Thank you. Thank you, Javin Mora. Thank you for joining us at the Odisha Design Week. Thank you, Suresh. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure too. All right. That brings us to the final session of this of today. Anthony Lopez will be joining us at 6.30. He's the founder and principal of Lopez Design. I see you at 6.30. Stay tuned.